All right, let's take a look at polynomials. Polynomials, when graphed, look pretty cool. They're not just basic lines or basic parabolas. They're a shape that has a lot more to it. So instead of just being a basic parabola, it goes up and then down and then up and then down. I mean, that's pretty neat. Along with this guy. I mean, way up, down, up, down. I mean, you can get some pretty cool shapes when you do polynomials. And by the end of this video, you should understand how these two graphs worked out the way they did. Let's take a look. The beginnings of this understanding take place from you being able to graph something as simple as um, y equals x minus 4. If you go to graph that, if I want to find the x-intercept, what I do is I plug in 0 for y. If I plug in 0 for y, I'd have 0 equals x minus 4, bring the 4 over, x equals 4. The x-intercept is 1, 2, 3, 4, and I put a dot at 4, and then I have a line with a slope of 1, so I know that my line looks like this, and that would be my graph. Pretty easy to see, okay? We know that this is a line. We should know that this is a parabola. But the beautiful thing about this is that I'm gonna, if I multiply this out, of course I would have an x squared in it, but I know this parabola's for that reason because I'd have the x squared, and then the intercepts are at, this one would be, when I set this equal to zero and use the zero product property, four minus four is zero, seven minus seven is zero, so this thing is gonna hit at four and seven would be its two x-intercepts. And then I would end up with some kind of a parabola that goes down and then back up, does something like that. All right? What about this guy? Well, this guy is going to do this something a little bit different now because it's going to hit three times. If I were to multiply these out, I would have an x to the third power. So then if I'm going to end up with an x to the third power after multiplying all these out, well, then I know that I'm going to hit at 1, 4, and 7. So I'm going to hit at 1, 4, and 7. And then I'm going to end up getting a graph that does something like this. It's going to hit at 1, come back down, hit at 4, come back up, and hit at 7. It's going to hit at these three locations. Now, let's get into the details of why these do what they do. There are five key words that you have to be able to understand in order to do this. Five key terms in the study of polynomials. So I would like you to... Uh, take a second to write down these terms, and we're going to be defining these as we go. So the terms that we have for the five key terms of polynomials are here. It has to do with uh, the root and a zero, degree, polynomial, odd even rule, and then end behavior or orientation. You can pause the video now, write those down, and then we're going to be going back and forth to fill this out. Okay, here's what's going to happen then is we need to start thinking about how we were able to graph these so quickly based on just simply knowing these x-intercepts. Well, one of the things you need to get used to is, you know, solving for that zero. And so a root or a zero is the definition. It's connected to, it's the x-intercept of the graph. So the x-intercept of the graph is also known as the root or the zero. All right? So we've got that. Now let's talk about the degree of the polynomial. The degree is a really important number. It has to do with the shape that you end up getting. A line is a first degree polynomial because this would be x to the first power. It basically goes in one direction. Next, if I multiplied this out, it would end up with an x squared. That's degree two. That has two directions, down, and back up, down, up, that has two directions. Golly gee whiz, look at this. X to the third power, it has one, two, three directions as you go through that. It has an up, down, up. So the degree is equal to the number of directions that you're gonna get into the shape of your polynomial. So if we go back over here, the degree of the polynomial is referenced from or figured out by looking at the highest power. The highest power of x and you take that and that's going to tell you how many directions you get directions that the graph goes I should put the word it's the number of it's the number of directions that the graph goes okay so it's the number of directions that the graph goes so this one was a third degree so it has three directions, one, two, three. All right, 
So it's the number of directions that the graph goes is what that should say. All right, then we need to know what a polynomial is. The definition of a polynomial is a, a number equation that has a situation where you have any number, so any number you want can go right here, and it has to be times x, and x needs to go up to a whole number power. So a whole number power up here. And then plus something else or minus something else or whatever. It's plus and minus. It doesn't make any difference. But it has to have this structure where it's any number times something to a whole number power. Now, obviously, I assume that you understand what a whole number is. Whole numbers are numbers like if I had x to the 0 power, x to the 1 power, x to the 2 power. Whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, and so on. x to the 0 is just fine. That's okay to have. So if we look at examples of what is a polynomial, um, these are things that are polynomials. Examples of polynomials, any number times x to the whole number power, these all work. This works because it's a second power. Now some people look at, oh, does that work? Yes, because that's the same thing as having 7 times x to the 0. Okay, that you could put, you know, an imaginary, if you wanted to, x to the 0 with power right there because that equals 1, and then 7 times 1 equals 7 anyways, so of course that works. These are all whole numbers up here for powers, so those all work. These are all whole number powers. Eventually, if you multiplied this out, you should be able to figure out that that's x to the second. There's two of them, three of them. This would be x to the fourth if you finished this one up, so that's going to be okay. These are not polynomials, things that have not whole numbers. There's a negative exponent that kills this. This is not a polynomial. x in the bottom, that flips up. So this is negative 2 power. That's no good either. x in the power. That's no good either. This one is a square root, so then we'd have, this is like having x to the 3 halves power, so that's no good either. So there are things that if they don't have a nice whole number up there, then we kick them out. They're not polynomials. So you should understand that. Then the next rule that you want to understand is the odd even power rule. What kind of power do you have? Do you have an even number like an x squared, or do you have an odd number like an x to the third? If you have an even number, so if you have an even number like this, like a 2, then what happens is you get the arrows are in going in the same direction. Arrows go in same direction. Okay? If the arrows go in the same direction for even powers, then if odd powers happen, something like this, arrows go in opposite direction. Go in opposite. Odd and opposite both start with O. And I'll show you what that means right now. So arrows go in opposite direction. So if we look at this here, the arrows are x to the third is odd. Odd means opposite. This arrow is down, this arrow is up. This is an even number. The arrows are going in the same direction as the finish. All right. And then the last one that you have to understand is the end behavior. We call it the orientation because it means how is it oriented on a piece of graph paper. Well, it's oriented by its last arrow. This last arrow is the most important arrow because this decides where your graph heads towards. Most graphs want to end in the upper right-hand corner because the upper right-hand corner has all the positive positives. So if we have a positive graph, like there's no negative multiplier, it's going to end with the arrow in the upper right. So if it's positive, your only choice is if it's positive, then you have an arrow in the upper right, arrow in upper right. If it's negative, then we end up with an arrow in the lower right. We're always talking about where are we going to the right side. So R-I-G-H-T here. So in the right. Okay, so arrow in the upper right or arrow in the lower right. So when I looked at these, I always had an arrow in the upper right because these were all positive. So now we should be able to put all this together and actually try a question and see if we can do these two right here and see if we're able to handle this. So here is a question that I've got here. So here's number four, and it says I've got x plus four times x minus one times x minus four squared you need to think about what the graph of these are individually, okay? If I go here, if I just have a plane x minus 4, I know that that's going to make a line because all it is is x minus 4. But as soon as I put an x minus 4 times an x minus 7, that's like saying I have a line times a line. Well, what it's doing 
is then that's making an x squared, which is going to make it parabola. But what it's doing at the x-intercept is it's creating a line. So if I zoom in just where it hits the x-axis, if I look just right here, there's a line right there that it's making. Then it's going to make a line here at 7. And so if it needs to have a line here and a line here, the only way you can do that is if you parabola. This one is going to have a line here, a line here, and a line here. So it's going to line at this point, so that's this one. It's going to line through here, and it's going to line through there. Well, the only way to pull that off, then, is to make that cubic kind of a shape. Okay, so let's look at this one, what this one's going to do. This one's going to make a line at negative 4, because that makes this the 0, or the root. So that's going to have a line at negative 4. This is going to be a line at positive 1. So there's 1, it's going to line there. And then it's going to parabola at 4. So what I mean by that is, it's going to do a parabola at this point because it's a squared. So this has to parabola off that point. Now, I need to look at this and see that there's a positive out front. If there's a positive out front like this, that means the last arrow is going to be up. I always put my first arrow on it. That's your job. Put your first arrow on, on the right, the ending arrow. Always do that. Then you go back and you count, is it odd or even? Two, three, four. Four is even. That means these arrows are even numbers. So a parabola is even, so they both need to be up. So I do my last arrow first, and then I do my first arrow here. So this arrow also has to be up. You literally put those on first, and then you fill in the rest of the graph. Make it line through here, because it has to line through there. Because if I zoom in and look at this little box, it better look like a line. And then it's got a line through 1, so it's going to dip down somewhere in here. And it's going to line through 1, because that right there is a line. And then it's got to go up, come back down, and parabola right there, and go back over. If I zoomed in right here, all I would see is a parabola type shape. Okay, so it's a line, line, parabola. Total powers is this would make an x to the fourth. That's even, which means I have four directions. One, two, three, four. And both arrows are up because it's even. And it's ending over here in the right because it's positive. Okay, let's try one more quickly. This is going to be a line through negative four. This is going to be a line through, so this is be negative four. This would be one. This is going to be a cubic. It's going to cubic at the spot of, so it's going to cubic at 4. So I go to 4 and it's got a cubic. Then if I look at this, the last arrow needs to be up because this is positive. So I'm going to put an arrow right here. I count the powers, 3, 4, 5. This is going to make 5 powers. So the first arrow is going to be down because they're odd. 1 down, 1 up. And then it's going to do a line through 4, negative 4. Then it's going to bounce up, come down. It's going to do a line through 1. And then it has to cubic right here. So it has to go up, and it has to do the S-curve right there, and then up and around. So it S-curves right at the 4 spot. So then I've got five directions. The directions are counted by going 1, 2, 3, 4, where it changes directions, and then 5. This one had 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 directions. So the number of directions are equal to the degree or the power. And that gets back to the key words that we had uh, going back over here. So now with all of that being said, you should be able to do these and know exactly what they're doing and how they're behaving. So that's the introduction to polynomials.